a diamond in the rough and from the weapon chat. How are you guys doing today? Um, what is it? Today's date is the 16th of March. Uh, where am I at with my roster? <laughs> I'm at a very good place. But yeah, I'll go into that shortly while I get my first colour out. Which, believe it or not, is 310. Yep. Oops. Okay, so what have you guys been up to? Um, I'm going to chat about a few different things. Uh, I might start off with the obvious at the moment, which is the coronavirus, which is freaking people out. Um, yeah, very much freaking people out. Um, it's actually starting to affect how I feel, so we'll see how that goes. Um, after my little conversation and my whip and chat now that I'm going through. Okay, so, uh, as I say, today I should be, today is uh, Monday and I should be doing Monday, Tuesday night shift, but I'm not. I've taken these two night shifts off and um, my next block, which is Monday, Tuesday day shift, Wednesday, Thursday night shift, I have also taken off. Let's try to see if I've got my phone here. Uh, where is it? I have no idea where my phone is. Hang on a sec. Okay, I found my phone. Um, this is. Hang on. Let's see if I can get my normal, normal. <gasps> This is what my shifts normally look like and this would be although this is next month this is like i'll be doing these two nights these two days and these two nights what it looks like for me though so we'll zoom in it up i've just done three day shifts and now i've got from monday till uh not next wednesday i've got just over two weeks off by taking three shifts off um, yeah this is how i managed to keep track of what i do um, but yeah that's all annual leave and it's only six shifts not if i was a monday to friday person that would be 10 11 12 shifts off or 12 you know 12 days off um, if i was working monday to friday but i'm not so six days gets me um 16 days 17 days 16 days off which is pretty good um, so yeah I would normally be right now asleep my alarm would be going off in about another 40 minutes because it's nearly half past three in the afternoon um, so yeah I've taken uh, a little bit of leave now I actually did plan to do stuff with that leave I had a couple of options one of those options was to go to Cairns and see my dad. Another option was to get on a cruise ship that departs in two days. And another one is to go to Westminster and see my stepfather who turns 95 this month. Um, so that was my plans. I actually booked, that was where I booked actually the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off. So I only drink booked off four shifts um, initially and then a week after I booked those four shifts I looked at the dates and went mm, okay it's actually Nathan and I we celebrate our 10 year anniversary together um, and I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on my channel I probably have but Nathan takes great delight in tormenting me over the fact that I actually can't remember the day of our first date I have it written down nowhere so I don't know where to find how to work it out um, yeah so he I think one year he said it was the 12th one year he said it was the 13th um, this year he said it was the 16th um, and then a couple of weeks ago he said it was the 18th and, and he just takes he just torments me on that day um, Although I don't think he realises what he's doing because 
I never tell him what day I, I believe our um, anniversary is. Straight out, I can't remember. Um, but I actually can't remember what day our um, yeah, what day our anniversary actually is. Hang on, just moving something out of the way. Um, so I do. I just keep my mouth shut, and he. We just go by what suits him. It's it's easier. Uh, I, mean, I have looked back at the calendars and worked it out that it was probably Friday the 13th um, because of where we went and the amount of crowds that were there it could have only been a Friday where we went <laughs> so if I go back to the date I think it worked out to be Friday uh, but it doesn't matter it's still a fun thing that um, we, that, that goes on between us with that and the joke is he doesn't even remember my birth date so I let him think that he knows when our anniversary is because yeah okay so um yeah because it's our 10 year anniversary and he initially said it was the 16th and now he said it's the 18th and because he can't make his mind up what day it was I have actually I booked these two nights off um, so that even if it, you know as the 16th if it was tonight if it was our anniversary today, we'd celebrate the anniversary today, I wouldn't be at work. If it was the 18th, um, and I'd actually work tonight, tomorrow's shifts, um, on the 18th, I'd be a little bit of a zombie and wouldn't be able to do anything at night time to go out and have dinner or whatever. Um, and I know he wants to do go gold class. So I booked the two shifts off. Um, before the panic or the state of emergencies and all of that that has been called um, actually kicked in. Um, and I suppose for me, the, the panic, I haven't seen it because I live in a, a shift bubble. And what do I mean by a shift bubble? I mean, while I'm at work, I'm, I'm gone from home, from my from when I leave home to when I get home, it's like 14 hours. I get minimal news. Um, I get to hear what other people are hearing, but um, in reality, we get I get minimal news. I, fear, I, I never get the full news when I'm on shift. Um, yeah. But with everything that's happening, um, for the state things are in, We've, it's been a case of we don't know what's going to happen and you know, I've got a lot of leave up my sleeve but we do but somebody made the comment because they booked some leave and they turned, made around, turned around and made some co a comment I'm not cancelling my leave just in case um, we don't know what's going to happen and if I cancel my leave I might not be able to get leave again you know just because of what's happening um, you know, at that point not really realising the implications that are going on at the moment uh, so that cemented in my mind it's like well I'm not going to cancel my leave I'll just see how it goes take each day as it comes on what I do so you know I got home last night and I said to Nathan you know, I've got my two days off I'm not due back at work till the 1st of April and he was he turned and said how long did you book and I went, oh, well, I just booked four shifts initially, but because of our anniversary, I thought I'd take the two night shifts off. And he worked it out and went, oh, that's, you've got 16 days off. And he goes, what, what, what are you planning? I said, well, I took the two nights off so we can do something for our anniversary. And his response was, well, we can go going out to a restaurant. Um, I'm not taking that risk. Yeah, he's... I suppose he's at that point of time last night he'd seen more than what I've seen um, and I've turned around and said oh well you know gold class will be okay so for the cinemas gold class even Nathan and I sitting together in gold class there's about one and a half meters between us um, there's three to four meters between us and the next lot of seats so that's how um, much space in a gold class is in the client but yeah we were looking at going gold class to so the movies gold class you get served your meal while you're watching movies or you get served whatever you want that's on the menu while you're watching movies. Um, 
But he turned around and said, oh, that's probably not open. And it's like, well, we'll, I'll ha we'll have a look, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, ha I still haven't looked. But at that point last night, I didn't realise what the state of things were. I mean, I, yeah, you know, it's just, I'd heard at work yesterday while I was at work that um, anyone coming into Australia or coming back to Australia to self-isolate for two weeks. Um, so, I mean, that was, we heard that at work and I thought that was actually a work policy. I didn't realise it was actually a, a government policy. Um, you know, that's just the bubble we were living. Um, and when we heard that, you know, we've got people that we work with that are actually overseas at the moment. Um, one of the girls I work with, she, where's she? I think she was Singapore or somewhere like that. And she's actually cutting her holiday short. So she's coming home earlier than what was planned so that when she gets back, she can self-quarantine and um, it won't affect her too much work-wise because she has to self-quarantine before she can come back to work anyway. Uh, so yeah. There we go with that side of it. So, you know, we, we're, we realise that, you know, there's people that we know that are going to have to self-quarantine before they come back to work, right, run. Yeah, no worries, that wasn't an issue. Um, and then, um, so this is all before I came home last night. So uh, just the little snippet bits we get. And I mean, um, turned around and speaking to somebody else about train drivers. There's a high percentage of BHP's train drivers that um, live overseas. And for them to come back to work, they have to self-quarantine for two weeks before they can come back to work. Now, train drivers have a roster, two on, two off. And what I mean by that is two weeks on, two weeks off. They're about to do a crew changeover um, where a new crew starts work on Wednesday who have been away for two weeks. Um, all of those guys that are international train drivers that come over here, they would have to quarantine themselves for two weeks before they could go to work. Uh, so basically they can't... For those that are here at the moment, if they go home, they can't go back. They, can't, they can go home... And by the time they self-isolate at home, before at the top, when they go back to work, they go home, their own country is making them isolate. And then when they finish that isolation, they've got to come back to work. And then when they get back, they've got to self-isolate, which is basically the whole period they're meant to be at work. Um, I don't know how the company's going to manage that, but um, got something there. Yeah, I don't know how the company is going to manage that, but basically, oh, no, there's still something there. There we go. The it looks like there will be probably only about fifty percent of the train drivers that normally work will be on shift because they can't because they live overseas. Ah, so yeah, there's an interesting little bit of work but after that you know like I've come home and Nathan's turning around and talking about the fact that you know we, he's not going to, we're not going to restaurants for dinner and um, you know and I, I've got to always look out and see, check out and see what happens whether we can get into gold class or not whether the cinemas are still open or not um, and all of that is a day by day checking I think um, and for me you know I've got no idea how much the hysteria has actually hit. I mean, I know, as I was saying before, the toilet paper issue. You know, Nathan was deadly serious and scared about running out of toilet paper because everybody's buying it up as soon as it's on the shelf, you know. And, you know, how proud he was to actually say he'd got some toilet paper. You know, it's uh, it didn't hit me properly. Um, I mean, the toilet paper side thing, it was like, oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, they'll, they'll eventually, people will settle down, it'll be all good. Yeah, I don't know about that now. But, um, 
<coughs> going from there, you know, like Nathan's saying about dinner, not being able to go to dinner, we're not going to dinner and all of that, right now. I'll find out whether we get to cinemas or not. <laughs> Stay tuned for that one. Um, but he turned around and said, what did you plan to do with this leave that you've booked? And I said, well, I was planning to go to Cairns and visit Dad. And his response was, no way in hell are you going to Cairns. If you're going to Cairns, we'll get in the car, we'll drive for two, we'll drive over there, and you'll be gone for two weeks, we'll, we'll drive there, you are not getting on a plane. And you're not, I don't want you going to Cairns anyway because it's a tourist hub and there'll be lots of people there and international people. And um, yeah, he was really going, not going off, but really worried. He was really worried about it. And like, I, I'm not really understanding how, how bad he's talking about. And then I said, oh, well then, if I don't go to Cairns, the other option was um, go down and see my stepfather. Um, you know, before he turns 95 um, if this illness goes if, if the virus goes down there um, to the sleepy little town that it is which it will um, but when it goes down there if he gets it um, yeah this will be his last birthday at 95 years old um, failing health yeah, this might be the last time I get to see him. But I mean, if I went to Cairns, that would probably be the last time I get to see my dad too. But Nathan won't, Nathan won't let me fly there and oh, there's no way am I driving there. <laughs> nope. Um, so yeah, the other option is, you know, air sprints. And then Nathan goes, oh, well, we'll both go down and um, we'll take my car. Yep. Where are we going to stay? I said, oh, we'll stay with mum's. And, um, yeah. So I haven't rung her. Hello, mum, if you're watching this right now. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't rung you yet and discussed because it's got to wait for Nathan to... Nathan's got a... I think we've got to just check what his roster says at work, whether he's got the weekend off and whether he can take an extra couple of days. Um, yeah, and go down to Esperance. We'll see. But yeah, I mean that was it was pretty interesting to see his reaction and I'm like last night, you know, he's talking about it and you know, saying we're not going here, we're not going there and I'm not letting you go there and um to see it's it's like I didn't say it to him, but it's like oh god, you're just paranoid. Um you know, it, it you're gonna either you're gonna get it or you're not gonna get it, and either you're gonna die from it or you're not gonna die from it. That's my attitude. Um, towards it, which it's a pretty blase attitude, that, and I even I say it to myself, and it's pretty blase. Um, you know, and Nathan turns around and said, "Oh well, I might die from it," and I said, "Well, that's yeah. Well, going by the stats, you're an asthmatic. It, it could affect you." Um, yeah. So it's quite an interesting uh, uh, thing there, where I've gone, "Holy cow, he's really." We were really paranoid about it and really well. You know, carrying on for no reason. Yeah, you know, I'm still at that point going, yeah, no, it's I'm okay with what's going on. It's it's scary. It's it's a time where we don't know what's gonna happen, there is uncertainty. Um but we'll be okay. Um, you know, I've seen little bits of news reports of people, uh, the food side of things and rations of, uh, you know, nobody being able to get anything and, you know, all of that. And it's, you know, I'd not really seen it where I've been to, when I've gone shopping for odd bits and pieces where I've gone, you know, they were affected with the toilet paper and the hand sanitizers and the hand soaps. But that was it, you know, everything else, there was food on the shelves. Um, and then today I went to a different shopping centre. And, you know, people are there just doing their shopping, doing their normal shopping. But that was uh, when it actually hit me how bad 
things were in the shopping stakes was this shopping centre. Um, and, um, you know, I walked into the... When you walk into the shopping centre that I enter, you know, the first spot you go through is where the fresh fruit and veggies are, which there is plenty of. There's no shortage of the fresh fruit and vegetables. Um, you know. And then towards the back of the store, go past fruit and veg, where there's all this, all, all the fruit, the veg, eggs, all of that on the shelf. In that area, it doesn't look um, like it, people had been mass gathering and, and raiding the shelves. It was, it was all full, it was all good. Um, and then I got to the back of the store uh, with the milk. And all, oh, oops, 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 wrong spot. That's, that's not the one I want, that's not where I want it. There we go. Um, and yeah, get to the back of the store where the milk is. And there is very little milk. Um, yeah, all the cheap milk that was there is gone. Um, you know, I drink, Nathan and I drink H2 milk. We, we, we pay a bit higher price for, the, for what we drink. Um, Nathan initially couldn't believe that I was buying this milk and then I think we went a time where I was buying the milk and then we had one time where we, he got milk instead of the A2, we got normal milk. Um, let's just say the next time he brought milk, he brought the A2 milk because the quality is that much better. Um, the stomach handles it much better. Um, but anyway, that's another matter. But all the cheap home brand milk uh, was gone. All the normal milk was, just about all the normal milk was gone. Um, normally when I go in and get my milk, get our milk, there's, you know, like we, I normally shop about three in the afternoon. Um, normally when I go in, there's at least, I think the shelves that they put them in, they put about 18 bottle, two litre bottles out at a time. Um, and you know, and I've gone there to the fridge and there was one, just the one bottle of milk there. Um, Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was grateful to see that. And it's like, I don't like light milk. Um, I like proper milk, I just like that. Full cream milk is the best way to put it. Um, but yeah, there was only that one bottle. I got the last bottle on the shelf. And then I turned right, and to the right, was the meat section. So your beef, your lamb, your mince, your chicken, your pork, all of that. And I looked at it and went, shit. I was fortunate that there was mince. Because my plan tonight is, um, we're doing burritos. I want, you know, doing a, like a chili con carne mix and burritos, put it in wraps with lettuce, tomato, grated cheese, all of that. So that's tonight's dinner. Um, you know, and I've looked around and it's like very little mince. Very little mince. But I was able to get a half a kilo and a kilo uh, mince. So half a kilo for the chili con carne. I need a kilo of mince to do um, my spaghetti casserole that I like, you know, Nathan really likes, well, both of us really like. Um, yeah, so I was able to get that. And then, um, you know, I had no issue getting all the fr fresh fruit and veggies that I wanted, you know, no issue there, right? And then I thought, oh, well, I'll, when I was getting the fruit and veggie, I went and I grabbed broccolini and went, well, I just need some chicken breasts and um, this packet mix and I'll be able to do that. So... You know, I've gone through the beef, gone through where the mince is, and then gone to where the chicken normally is. And uh, basically there's no chicken breasts. I was very lucky that there was chick, what they call chicken schnitzel, which is basically chicken finely sliced. So you had uh, slices of chicken. Yeah, I paid, 
paid dearly for that. But I got the chicken, so that's tomorrow night's dinner. Uh, so you know, I've got got my mints for two meal, well, well, one meal plus a, a bulk meal. Because uh, my spaghetti casserole is big, and I do package it up into into bulk quantities. Um, I package it up into single serve. Sorry. So I've done, and you know, I've got my chicken and gone righty. Oh, I can do that mix now. From there, it was well. I need to grab sour cream to go on the Doritos, <laughs> not the Doritos burritos, the tacos. Um, hang on, I'm just looking for. There we go. This just helps me find it, see if I've missed any. Um, so yeah, gone for the burritos, gone for the sour cream for the for what we're having. Um, all the all the chilled stuff down there. So the, you know, like being the chilled stuff, it is perishable. So you, if you buy it bulk, it's going to go off. It's not worth you know buying bulk. So that was you know those shelves were well stocked. There's plenty of it, no issue. Yet again, and then okay, so I've got the sour cream. My next thing is well, I need to head down. I need to get my angel hair spaghetti, my passata sauce. I had to get this special box mix to do my um, chicken and broccoli dish that I chicken and broccolini dish that I do. Um, so I'm heading that way, and I've gone. Oh, there, there's my coke. That's on special. I'll grab that box. So thirty pack of coke cans. Notice that the pile was less than normal what you'd normally see, especially at that time of the day. Um, so I've worked, walked a couple of hours down, and then it's like, right, yeah, this is the aisle. And then, oh my goodness, that's where it was like. I think that was where it hit me. Um, before all the pasta that was there, there was lasagna sheets, and. The other that they had, the other lot of pasta there was actually spinach fettuccine. Um, I think that was more a case of people weren't that keen on it, but there wasn't that much of that anyway. Um, my mix to do my broccoli, broccolini and chicken dish was there, that was all good. Then I've gone to where the passata sauce is. So these are big bottles of passata sauce. Yeah, no passata sauce, no pre-made. You know, you, you you buy your your pasta sauces for your for your pasta dinners. You know, all of that was just gone, completely gone. None of it. Um. Yeah, I got a strange feeling. I'm going to have to do a shop run very early in the morning to be able to get what I want, which is bloody ridiculous. Um, yeah, so I've done, you know, I've right, I've just turned around and thought, well, I'm going to have to go to another shopping centre for that, and I'll have to do it early in the morning to be able to get it in time. Yeah, no worries, you know, I'm, that'll be all good. But I'm like feeling, feeling a little bit nervous about it. Then I walk down that same aisle. Where we have the baked beans and bin, you know the baked beans, the tin spaghetti, all of the uh, stuff that in tins that you would basically hoard your tin vegetables, uh, you know tin tomato, you know all of that. Just the strip, the shelves are stripped bare, and you know I'm I can't believe it. It is not. If people actually weren't doing this, it wouldn't be such an issue. You know, we've got a shortage of stuff now because people panic buy. If they didn't panic buy, the stuff would be there for us to do. I mean, a lot of the stuff, yes, there is a lot of international stuff that is tinned. But hey, how about we look at, you know, what's tinned in Australia? That's not going to run out. People are going to continue to be able to produce that on to proviso of other things happening you know but um, yeah um, so yeah so that's you know yeah I was flabbergasted with with that one aisle 
all of this stuff that can be stored and stashed has just been gone, ripped from the shelves and uh, horrible. And then I've gone to the, the toiletry side of things, knowing full well, 100%, not a chance in hell. If I wanted hand sanitizer, I would not be able to get any. I knew it straight up, so I didn't even bother looking. What I did do, though, was I was heading for the toothpaste because we are nearly out of toothpaste that we use. Um, we do have toothpaste. Uh, we've got some in the camp kit. Uh, you know, so it's not like we're, we're going to run out. But I thought, well, I, you know, I'll grab a tube of toothpaste because the ones that we've got in the bathroom are nearly empty. And there's no toothpaste. And then, you know, I see a lady there stocking, stocking up the shelves. Um, we're all like the Panadols and all the pain relief tablets that you'd use for cold and flu. She's stocking it and there's people grabbing it. As soon as she's putting it on the shelf, there's people actually going, yep, yeah, you know. So it's going that quickly. Um, but I think to actually see the empty shelves to the degree that they were, I was surprised. Yeah, I heard about it and I heard about fighting in stores and all of that. Um, but it's like, no, nah, it couldn't be happening. Yeah, it couldn't be happening everywhere. Or well, the, the shortage on the shelves is happening. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, from there, I went to the checkout. And this couple that were in front of me have, um, hang on, just trying to find my next letter that I'm going to, what am I going to work on next? Uh, 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 I want the lowercase t, but where is it? It's what happens, where is it, where is it, where is it, there it is. Uh, I don't think I need many of them, but yeah. Um, so you go through a checkout and there's this couple with a like their son in a wheelchair, you know, Woolies, which is where I shop, Woolies have announced that they're doing their opening hours, they're doing an hour earlier just for uh, pensioners with pension cards or uh, people with disabilities so that, you know, the vulnerable can do, can shop without being jostled around. Um, you know, so yeah, the elderly and the disabled can shop without being jostled around. And where, you know, the elderly and the sick and that, you know, they find it hard to get to the shops as it is. Um, yeah, this is the way to get them to have stuff, that, you know, the shops, the shops are, are stocking at night, stocking the shelves at night time. By the time the people rush in and get stuff, it's the ones that disadvantage people ones um, that can't get in in that like that. Uh, just frustrates me. Um, but yeah, the the woman turned around and she's saying to the checkout lady, she's you know, going, yeah, well, you know, we, I don't know where my disability card is for my son, my carer's card is for my son. And you know her response was, "You just come in with your son, and you will be able to shop because he's in a wheelchair. It's straight out. There's no denying there's a disability. But the thing is, they're opening the shops an hour earlier. Okay, so an hour earlier for people to come in that have dis disabled. I don't know about you, but if I was to the degree an elderly person or disabled getting up and being into the shops at seven o'clock in the morning as opposed to when the shop shut at eight um it, it's a harsh thing to say well you need to get out of bed that much earlier to get food i don't know maybe it's the right thing to do you know yes they're still disadvantaged but yeah i don't know i know what i am thinking is tomorrow morning Oh, no, I won't do it tomorrow morning, but I will do um, probably Thursday morning. Um, I'm going to have to get up early and be at the shops at half past eight, so when they open their doors I can go in and get the stuff that I need, my standard everyday stuff to cook with. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, anyway, I was at the checkout, so I've waffled on the crowd on. Get the checkout, and these, you know, this couple are talking about, you know, being able to shop at an early hour time, you know, so that they can get their stuff, which is which is a good thing, right? Don't get me wrong, it's a very good thing. I just find that getting out of bed that much earlier just to shop is is pretty cruel, anyway. <laughs> um, mm. I don't know how many of you guys would find it. You know, you've got to get up a couple of hours earlier so that you can get to the shops to be able to shop instead of just people standardly respecting the dis di disability people, you know. I think the shops should, instead of doing an hour earlier, just open the doors and not allow anyone in that has a disability until after nine o'clock, you know. Maybe that would be better suited. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just doing it. Um, but yeah, so they were talking and then uh, the the lady behind the counter, she turned around and she said, you know, like all this stuff that was in the shopping trolleys behind her, and uh, you know, um, she's telling, she turned around and she said to them, oh, well, this is all the stuff that we've, for people that have brought in large quantities, we've actually had to take from them um, because there's a restriction on quantities of goods, so we've actually had to take it and just put it here, and it will go back on the shelves tonight. So I've heard that. And I immediately start scanning and looking at what's in the pile of goodies. <laughs> Going, can I find toilet paper in that pile? Mm. What I did do, I spotted some fettuccine. If uh, it's not fettuccine, yeah, yeah, fettuccine. Yeah, fettuccine, I think it was. So I, I spotted one of the pastas anyway. Um, and thought, oh, I'll see if, if, it's, if it's meant to go back on the shelf. But it's there. I wonder if I can get it get it from her. Um, so yeah, this couple finished with their shopping, and then I, you know, I was uh, my my stuff got up, and we did the shopping. And I was talking to her about the stuff up there, and she said, "Yeah, this is um, this will go back on the shelves, but it's because people have tried to purchase too much." <laughs> and I went, "So that bit of part that pasta shit there?" And she's, I said, "Does that mean that that's available?" And she goes, "Yeah." She goes, which one do you want? <laughs> so like this aisle that I'd gone down with no pasta, there was actually pasta. There was quite a few packets of pasta up right next to her and she's turned around and said, here, you can have one of these. You know, it's not like I wanted two or three or anything like that. I just wanted one of them. And they said, oh, here, here you go, you can have one. There we go. So I got my pasta. Didn't get my pasta sauce, but I got my pasta. Um, yeah, I will say that when I finished at that checkout, I'm still feeling it now, um, but when I got finished with the checkout and put the my groceries in the car and I sat down in my car seat and it was like, I'm not going to cry here. Um, so I... I, I suffer panic attacks and I know I, I can talk myself out quite a lot of panic attacks. Um, I managed to keep myself calm while I was in the shop. Um, you know, it's... Yeah, it, yeah when, you, when you suffer panic attacks and you know how debilitating they can be, you do need to learn how to manage them. Um, but I mean, that's... Yeah, when I got into my car... I still, I still, I was, I was, um, I don't know whether I was shocked or, or I, was, I was, I know I was like, I was a bit panicked, a bit, of, I suppose a bit of like more of like an anxiety, um, got the good old chest pains of my anxiety, when I sat in the car, I felt it, um, you know, and I just, yeah, I mean, I am, from when I finished work yesterday afternoon, well, last night, so I got home around the seven o'clock hour. Um, when it was like, oh, well, you know, 
we're just going to have to alter the way we live for a little bit while this goes on or well, happens. Um, yeah. You know, now I'm actually seeing that the, the seeing what's going on. But I will say that since I finished work yesterday and got home yesterday till now so much in the media there is so much in the media about it that um, you know like I hadn't seen much in, I hadn't seen much and I was all calm and collected and then you know there's bits and pieces on the media that you see in here and then going into the shops and seeing the way it was it was like if yeah, the media does so much damage. Um, you know, I get there and think if if one shopping centre was bolt, was running out of had a mass a mass hysteria about toilet paper, and it wasn't reported, would that have happened in other states in other countries? You know, one person panics and buys a pack of a ship load of toilet paper and then that causes other people to panic and buy it but then if it wasn't in the media about it would we have ended up with the situation of so much panic buying who knows but yeah I mean I've started to go I'm from being someone that was like yeah well you know it's not bad we'll, you know, we'll get through it um, yes it's it's going to be harder than the flus that we get you know the the all of that and you know i've even looked at it and gone you know after this goes through i'm highly likely uh going to find that my dad my stepfather and possibly even my mum won't get through this coronavirus going through the country um you know, uh, you know, even that in my head is not sending me into a panic. It's just like, well, you know, um, not being, I don't know how to put it, not being insensitive. Um, but I was able to face the reality of, you know, that's what's going to happen. I, I, I don't think, I don't believe that we can protect everybody from getting it I don't think there's anything we can do to stop it um, yeah so I, I'm one of these people that straight up you know, this is the way it's happening and um, I do think worst case scenarios but I'm good at that I'm good at worst case scenarios and it helps me deal with so much that happens in my life um, and to, to have the thought that something like this can go through and wipe out so many people um, is horrible you know the thought my, my dad my stepfather my mum could be affected by it you know I could lose them um, you know it's, it's harsh it is harsh but it's a reality you know I'm sorry to say it but I'm one of these people that I would rather go up to somebody that has it I would prefer to go up to somebody that has the coronavirus, go give it to me <laughs> so that I can get it, get over it, you know, recover from it. It's probably the better way to say. If it kills me, it kills me, so be it. But I would bet rather be someone that goes to someone that has corona, goes in and I can get it over and done with, if that makes sense. Um, you know, the soon, you know, because not everybody's going to die from it. Not everybody's going to die from it. But at this stage, in the early stages, before the healthcare system is really swamped, is the better time to get it. If that makes, if you understand what I'm saying. So at the moment, if I get, I go near someone with coronavirus, I go in, I get tested, I've got it, and I can get treated for it. But in four weeks' time, when it's absolutely smashed the health services, 
like Italy's got to the point where, for, for what I can tell, Italy's reached the point where if you're elderly and sick, don't even worry about coming into hospital because we can't treat you. We don't have the beds. We don't have the medicine, all of that. You know, where that's where I am at the moment, thinking maybe I should go near someone that's got it, get it over and done with while the health care system can still deal with me. <laughs> and then I am, once I've got it and recovered from it, I am back to living a normal life because I then know that I'm not going to pass it on to anybody because I've had it, I'm not over it. And I'm not going to be affected by anybody else that has it because I've already had it and I'm over it. That's the way I see it. Um, I'd love to get it right now while the health system is still able to deal with it. What I will say is I'm not looking forward to getting it you know, if I cough it in two or three months, um, that's a scenario that's not going to be good because the lack of medication in the world, the lack of everything, at that point, everything will be extremely stretched to its limits. Uh, yeah. And what you... <laughs> I suppose from my experience of things, it's a bit, I suppose I'm a bit weird in that way. Um, I am hang on I'm looking for a, a six where's the six where's the six it's got to be here somewhere there it is um, yes yeah, so, I mean that's just mm, who knows but if everybody had the attitude of, oh, I'll go get it now, that's just going to cause issues as well. I don't know. No matter which way you look at it, you know, everybody has their own opinions on things. Um, it's, oh, had the discussion. I raised a point in, we're in a, in a uh, we do a safe start when we start our shift so that we get in a room, we talk about stuff. Um, and you know, before safe start talks, you know, safe start. Now supervisor starts things off. You know, we we we're there and we chat. And I turned around and I said, the worst thing they can do around here is take the kids out of school. And I actually had one woman just go, "You're wrong there." And I turned around and I said, "If you look at, they take kids out of school. They already know that." Um, the majority of kids, the, the percentage of kids dying of this illness is so low that the only thing it's going to do is put a, pre it's just going to put pressure on everything else by taking our kids out of school because their parents are going to have to stay at home and look after them. And when you have emergency service staff and nurses and all of that that have kids and they're not able to do their jobs because they have to stay at home with their, with their own children that are still healthy, it just stretches resources. And she, and she was like, no, you're wrong with the kids. They're grubby things, they, they spread germs. And so this is a woman that doesn't have kids. Uh, they spread germs, you know, they'll spread it through the community. Um, yeah, I don't know, I was frustrated. So I just let her go off and just, I shut my mouth and just shook my head and just, no. Nah. It's very interesting to hear people that don't have kids that don't see the practicalities of, of that side of things um, you close all the schools and yeah, all the schools parents that are casual workers part-timers they uh, you know even even when I was I was a single mum you know and my kids were home from school and I was a contractor so I only got paid for what I worked. I wasn't on a salary, I wasn't able to take leave. Um, so it affects so much more. But no, kids have got in germy things, they spread germs, shouldn't be out. And it's like, well, hang on. You send the kids home from school, the parents are still gotta go, do shopping. What are they gonna do? Take the kids with them, spread it more, think about it. Yeah. 
they're sending kids home from school. They're not making the kids isolate, they're just sending them home from school. Yeah. Mm. Now there we go, I ended up like an <laughs> interesting coronavirus chat. And I know that it is going to be hard on everybody and we are all going to lose someone that is dear and dear to us. We will, unless you have nobody in your life, you will lose somebody that you, you love. If you have anyone that is sick or anyone that's sick or elderly, you want to make sure you tell them that you love them. That's probably about the best thing, the only thing that I can really say out of all of this is just make sure they know that you love them. Um, because you might be in a position where you can't go near them again or see them again. That's a horrible thought. Absolutely horrible thought. Mm. But yeah. Things that happen in nature, they happen in nature for a reason. I've seen these pictures all around the world of these places where it used to be mass crowds. Uh, I bet you, the, the, with these places all where there's nobody, I bet you that air is beautiful and clean now. Uh, you know, <laughs> this will make a... <laughs> it's funny to say it, but it will make a di so much of a difference in some countries. The highly populated towns and highly populated cities... Um, it will make a difference there. Mother Nature doing doing what she can to get her planet back is the way it, it almost looks like. It's making everybody stop. It really is making people stop. It's stopping the cars and the stuff that's, you know, the fumes that are no longer being produced. Yeah, I don't know. How do you guys feel about it? I'm, you know, I will say I'm at the point where I believe I will lose loved ones. Do you know what? At the end of it all, when it's all settled down, I hope to hell I am able to say I didn't lose those loved ones that I thought I was going to lose. I hope that nobody ends up losing any loved ones. But I will say I am, I'm not being realistic. Okay, I missed a couple there with that one too. And I don't mean to offend anyone. I Hopefully I haven't said anything that to offend anyone with what I've been saying. Um, but yeah, all I can say is, is let your loved ones know you love them. Um, especially in a time like this, you don't know if you'll see them again. Because um, it is, it is scary times. But you've got to be realistic. Hmm. I did have another thought there a while ago about it with the fact that with all the deaths that are, are going to happen and have been happening. Um, Yeah. yeah, there's just some thoughts that are just not good, not good. There will be some industries that will thrive on this, the undertakers. Yeah, you get, what happens? What happens when you have a, when you die of something contagious? How? Yeah, I just I can't imagine what it's going to be like when it hits Australia full on. Yeah, 
can't imagine what it's going to be like. So all I can say is send love and best wishes to your family. You know, let them know if you've got any grudges with family members. Now is the time to not mend the grudges, but still let you let them know you love them. I suppose that's enough of my morbid sad talk where I've just gone from amazement of, of how things have progressed and from me being so uh, out of the loop media wise and just thinking everything's yeah it's bad but we'll get through it to seeing how it is actually affecting people to then being at the end of that conversation ended up being a bit uh, sad and um, yeah I'm sorry if it took that turn and I, hopefully I haven't upset you. Uh, but I suppose that's what whip and chats are about. I don't, when I sit down and do a whip and chat, I have, I don't always have a subject I want to cover. You know, generally I sit down to a whip and chat and it's like, oh, this is what I've done recently and then it ends up evolving, which it was, which it has just evolved. It just evolved. Like everything does, it just evolves. Um, I'll just get these X's in and I'll see how we go. I will say this to you guys I hope that you are safe um, and you look after your health. There will be more, you know, obviously, I'm not going to stop now. I'm, you can see, I'm back to recording again. Can say that hopefully I'll hear from you again. Leave comments, but most of all, hug your loved ones. It will be tough times coming up, but hug your loved ones. They need to be hugged. So I'll leave it there, guys. Thank you. I haven't quite, you know, completed that section. Um, this is actually uh, round. 50 by 135 um, from Royal Diamond Painting. So this is the geisha lady that I'm working on. Um, but yeah, guys, I'll talk to you another time. Thank you for listening. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, yeah, and I will uh, talk to you later. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. And just know that if you, you can't hit that bell, if you're not subscribed. So... I'll catch you guys later and uh, look after yourselves and see you in another video. Okay.